Hi friends, welcome to Taming Python series. In this video, we are going to talk about connecting your Python script with a PostgreSQL database using the Psycho PG2 Python module. You know, in our previous videos, we we'll talk about what is a database, why should we use a database, and some database administration tools like PG Admin and DBWare. If you don't know about what is a PostgreSQL database, what is PG Admin, what is DBWare, I've made videos on those and I'll leave the links of those videos in the description of this video. You can go check them out if you don't know them already. PG Admin and DBWare are useful if you want to manually interact with the database. But if your Python code wants to interact with the database, like it wants to create some data or fetch some data from the database, then Psycho PG2 module is the one you want. In this blog post, we'll try to learn how to use Psycho PG2 Python module to run commands like select statements to fetch the data, insert statements to insert data into the database, delete statements to delete data from the database, and update statement to update the database rows. So before starting to use Psycho PG2 Python module, first you got to install that, right? So in your Python environment, open a command prompt and run this Python minus m pip install Psycho PG2. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open my command prompt now. My command prompt is open. So now I'll write python minus m pip install psycho pg2. You can see this command has installed psycho pg2 python module in my python environment. So now we are good to go to use psycho pg2 python module in our python projects. So the first thing we're going to learn about using psycho pg2 python module is connecting to the database. So to connect to a database, you need to have some parameters like what is the IP address of your database or what is the host name of your database, on what port your database is listening to the request. By default, PostgreSQL database listens on a 5432 port or some other port which is configured in the database and the name of the database you want to connect to and what is the username and password of the database. So to connect to the database, you need to create two objects. First, you need to create the connection object by running psycho pg2 dot connect and give all the host port database name username password parameters to that connection and then a connection object will be created and then you need to create a cursor object so to create a cursor object use the connection object and write connection dot cursor so then you can get a cursor object the reason why you need a cursor object is using a cursor object you can execute commands like if you want to fetch data you can write cursor dot execute and run the select statement or if you want to delete some rows in the database you can write cursor dot execute delete something from the database something like that so basically cursor object is useful to run your sql commands over the database so that's why we need a cursor object and once you do all of your work using this connection and cursor objects at the end you can close your cursor and close your connections to dispose of the resources so this is how you can use psycho pg2 to create a connection and cursor objects and this is how you can establish a connection with the database in your python code so let's try to implement this simple code of connecting to a database using psycho pg2 python module so before writing this python code i just want to show you my database i'm using dbware tool to explore my database so if you don't know how to use dbware or pg admin you can refer my videos and i've given the links of those videos in the description of this video so for now i'm using the dbware and i've created a postgres sql database connection and in this connection there is a database called test one and in this test one there is a schema called public and inside the public there is a table called students and in that students table i have some rows so i want to use my python code to interact with this database so to know the parameters of the database i'm just right clicking on my connection and i'm just writing edit connection and here I can see the parameters of my database. Here the host name is localhost. If your database is a remote database, you can use the IP address and my port is 5433. The database name is test1, username is postgres and the password is this. So let's try to use these variables in our Python script to connect to your database. So I'm gonna take a blank folder and I'm gonna open it with VS code now. So I'm gonna create a new file, I'll just name it index.py. Now I will enable the Visual Studio Jupyter Notebook cells feature by writing hashtag percentage percentage. So you can execute your code in pieces and see what are the variables in the variable explorer. All right, so now let's get started with coding. The first thing I gotta do is I gotta import the psycho pg2 module, right? So I'll just write import psycho pg2. And the next thing is I will just hard code my database connection parameters. So I'll just write the database server host as db host. In my case, it is local host. And I'm gonna write the db name test1 and the db port. So my db port is 5433. And the database username. So I'll just write db username. And the username is Postgres. And the database password. So I have to write my database password. So I'm right creating a variable called db plus, and this is my password. So using these hard-coded values. Let's try to connect to a database using this psycho pg2 connect function. So I'll just write a connection object called connection equal to 
psychopg 2 dot connect and here i'm going to use the parameters so i'm going to give the parameters like host equal to the db host variable which you have created port equal to db port database name db name equal to db name and the username user equal to db username password equal to db password so now using psycho pg 2 dot connect function i got a connection object so using the connection object i can get a cursor object right so I'll let cursor equal to connection dot cursor. So now I can get a cursor object from this connection object and you have to do something like executing commands or something. We'll do that later. So I'll just write do something in a comment. Once your job is done, you have to close your cursor and a connection. So you have to write cursor dot close. So the cursor will be closed and at the end you have to write connection dot close. Your connection will be destroyed. So this is how you can interact with your Postgres SQL database using the connection object and the cursor object. All right, so we have completed the Postgres SQL connectivity code. So let's try to run this cell and see how it works. I'm just running this cell. Here you can see we have run without errors. So basically we are connecting to the Postgres SQL database. Now that we know how to connect to a Postgres SQL database using PsychoPG2, let's try to understand how to fetch data from a database using PsychoPG2. You know, in order to fetch data from a database, you have to run a self query, right? So let's go ahead into my dbver and try to see what query we should write to fetch data from a table. So in our example, inside the test one database, you have a schema public and inside that you have a table called students and I have some rows. So if you want to fetch data from this students table, let's write a SQL query here first and try to use that in our code. So I'll just right click on this test database or test one database. I'll just right click on this and I'll select select editor open SQL script. And here I've got a SQL script space where I can write my SQL script. So I'll just write select name, date of birth and student ID from public dot students where date of birth greater than or equal to I want to have a date of birth greater than 1st January 2018 so I'll just write 2018 0101 space 00 colon 00 colon 00 dot triple zero because this is a timestamp right the column type is a timestamp you can you can expand this table here and you can see the columns also you can see ID name date of birth date of birth is a timestamp ID is an integer name is a string and student ID is an integer and I just want to have one more thing like student ID should be greater than 3000 or something like that so i will let and student id greater than or equal to 3000 and i want the results to be ordered by name and then student id so i'll just write order by name so our results will be ordered by name first and then if the name is same you can order it by student id so this is the sql query which you have to run so i'll just run this sql query and you can see without errors i've got some rows so if i just want to format this document i can just right click on this and write format format sql so you can have a sql formatted here so let's try to see the query once again and i just written select name date of birth student id from public students because this is the table name i have some conditions where date of birth greater than or equal to first january 2018 and student id greater than or equal to 3000 order by name student id because we are ordering the results by name first and if the name is same you can order it by student id next so here you can see that's why the row with the name abcd came first because we are ordering by name you can even select id also so you can write select id comma name comma date of birth and so on i'll just format the sql again so now let's run this again you can see i got id column also so let's try to implement this sql in our psycho bg2 example so to execute an sql query over the cursor you have to call the function called cursor.execute and you have to give the sql string so we can directly give this sql string to our cursor and the cursor will execute to get the results and at the end you write cursor.fetch all and you'll get the results as a list of tuples but here in my example i have written something different i have given my parameters as percentage s and I have substituted them later in the execute statement. This is really important to do because it helps in avoiding the SQL injection attacks in your script if you expose your script to get inputs from other persons. So always remember, don't give your input variables in the SQL directly because it will make your SQL script susceptible to SQL injection attacks. Instead, give Python objects like integers and date times as variable substitution, then psychopg2 will take care of SQL injection attacks. So that's why in my SQL, I've written the same SQL here, but instead of giving the in input variables directly, I've given percentage s here. And since I've got two percentage s variables here, while doing the cursor.execute, I've given two variables in the tuple where the first variable is the date time because day will be greater than or equal to and the second variable is 3000 because student id greater than or equal to and this way we have used sql substitution for avoiding the sql injection attacks 
So let's get started and try to do this in our code. We completed the connection example. So let's continue from here. Instead of do something, we'll just fetch data. So to fetch data, you need to have SQL, right? So I'll just write SQL string equal to. So this is the SQL string which we are going to use. Notice that I have going to backslash here so that I can continue my string in the next line. So I'll just write cursor dot execute and here I have to give my SQL string so SQL string and here I have to give my variables input variables as tuples. So the first variable is the date of birth. So in order to use the date of birth as a date time I have to import date time right. So I'll just write import date time as dt and here I'll write my date time as dt dot date time. And here I'm going to give first January 2018 and I've given the date time now. The next variable is student ID. So I'll just write the student ID as 3000. So I've substituted my SQL inputs as a tuple in my cursor.execute function. Okay, I forgot to write the order by also. So I'll just write order by name and student ID. All right. Since I've got my cursor.execute, if I want to know how many rows are written, I can have a handy function called cursor.row count. So if I write cursor.row count, I can get number of rows affected in this case the number of rows which are fetched so i can quickly know number of rows fetched from the database using this cursor.row count so i'll just print it here i'll write print number of rows fetched equal to number of rows all right so i came to know number of rows fetched now i want to get the rows itself so how can i do that you can call cursor.fetch all i'll just create a variable called records and here i'm writing cursor.fetch all Using this cursor.fetchAll function, you can get all the rows written by this SQL execution as a list of tuples. So let's try to print this records also and see how the results look like. So let's print this records and at the end we are anyways closing the cursor and connection. So that's it guys, just by this very less number of lines, I can get to know how many rows are fetched and I can get the actual rows itself. So let me try to run this cell. So I'll just run this cell so that I can execute this code. I've got the output as number of rows fetched equal to 2 and i've also printed the records right so you can see the records is a list of tuples here this is the first tuple and this is the second tuple if you want to have a better visualization you can go to the variable explorer anyways so i'll just open the variable explorer here variables and here you can see i've got a lot of variables which are executed in the cell and the variables which you are interested in is the records variable so i'll just double click on this records variable and here you can see in the data viewer, the records is actually a list. Each item in the list is actually a tuple. So we can even see individual item in this uh, Jupyter cell. I can just write records of one so that I can see the first num first value of the record list. So I'll just write records dot one. I mean the second value. So here it's a tuple and the first item is the name and then the date time and then the student ID. So here you can see since we have selected name date of birth and the student id we got the same ordering so first we got the name column value second we got the date time value and then we got the student id value so i'll just print out the records here directly so you can see i got the first row second row and each row is a tuple with the values of the name date of birth and student id so we can iterate over these tuples to do many actions like populating a view or just printing or logging or whatever so in our example, let's try to iterate over these records and just print each row in a formatted way. So I'll just use a for loop to print each record. So I'll just write for r in records. So I'll just print name equal to, date of birth equal to, and the student ID equal to. And I'll just substitute using the format function in the string. I'll just write format r of, since I'm getting the name as the first item, I'll just write r of zero because the zeroth item of the tuple is the name. And then the second thing is the date of birth and date of birth is the second item of the tuple. So I'll just write R of 1 and you can see that the student ID is the third item of the tuple. So R of 2. So that's it. Just by iterating over each record, I'm just printing the name, date of birth and student ID. So for now, let's try to comment this print statement and let me try to run this again. So I'll just run this cell again. And here you can see number of rows fetched equal to 2 because we written the print statement here using the cursor.row count. And using the for loop on each record, I was able to print the name, date of birth, and student ID. So that's it, guys. This is how you can fetch data from your database rows and populate them into tuples and use that tuples to do whatever you want. So just like printing, I just want to show you another use case where you can create a data frame from these records which you have fetched from this database. This is a common use case. So let's try to cover that now. So I'll just comment on these lines again. And then I'll try to create a data frame from these fetched records. So to create a data frame from a list of tuples, you can write pandas dot data frame so i'll just import pandas first i'll just write import pandas as pd 
So the column names of the fetched rows can be accessed using cursor.description object. So let's try to print that and see how can we obtain the names of our columns of the return rows. So I'll write cursor.description and I'll just try to print this here. So let me try to run this. So cursor.description is a tuple where each item corresponds to the name of the column returned in the rows. So here, since I've made the query with name as first column, date of birth as the second column, and student ID as the third column, you can see in my rows fetched also in the cursor.description, I've got the column name as name, date of birth, and student ID in the same order of the fetched results. So I can extract these strings from this cursor.description by using a simple list comprehension. So I'll just write x per x in cursor dot description and here I can write x of 0. So here you can see using the list comprehension if I get the first item I can get the string of the column. So here I have written x of 0 for x in cursor dot description and I've got the list of columns in the same order which we have queried. So I can use this as a column names while creating the data frame. So I'll just write df equal to pd dot data frame records equal to the records which are the tuples which I've got from the query and columns is basically this list comprehension where I'm getting the zeroth item of the cursor dot description. So I'm just taking this and writing x of zero for x in cursor dot description. So let me try to comment out this print statement. And here I have to write data not record. So I just written data equal to the records. So data is a list of tuples which you have got from the query. So pd dot data frame data equal to records and columns equal to the column names which I've got from the cursor dot description variable. And so let me try to save it and run this cell. I've got my cell executed. And if I just see what is df using this interactive query. Here I have got the df in the same desired way where I got the column names and rows as the rows of a data frame. So this way, just using this single line of code, you can convert your list of items which are returned from the query into a pandas data frame. This is one of the most common use case while converting the data fetched from the database into pandas data frame. So you can do further operations like removing duplicates and etc. All right, so that was an example of fetching rows from a database. Here you can see I have given the source code but in my source code, I have used try except. So basically, if you want your code to handle errors, you can encapsulate your code inside a try except so that you can handle the errors by yourself. So here in, in my example, I have encapsulated all my cursor connection and all the operations involved in the cursor and connection inside a try statement. And if I come across an error, I will handle this using this except statement. And at the end, I will just print the error and go ahead and I'm resetting my records so that I return empty records from my execution. And finally, whether you have an exception or not, you have to close the connection, right? So if you have a connection variable, you close the cursor and you close the connection. So this is how you can gracefully handle errors while performing operations. So let's try to incorporate that in our code here. So this was our code, right? So this is where we start our connection of our database. So let me try to create a try, ex try except here. So I'll just write try and I'll encapsulate all this code where I'm doing the database transactions. I'll just do that here. And here, if I get exception, I have to handle this. So I'll just write exception. And here the exception can be a normal exception or a psycho pg2 database exception. So I'll just write psycho pg2 dot error as error variable. And here at the end, I can write print and then I'll just reset my records so that I can be sure that I am returning an empty list of tuples. And at the end, I have to close the cursor, right? So I'll just write the finally clause here. I'll just write finally and I'll just close the connection and the cursor. And that's it. Now you can even handle your exceptions by yourself while interacting with the Postgres SQL database. You can see I've created a blog post on installing Psycho PG2 Python module, connecting to the database, fetching rows from a database. I've also created the examples for inserting rows into the database, updating and deleting the rows into the database, along with some best practices. But since this video is getting long, I'm gonna continue the insertion, deletion, and update of database rows in the next videos. I've also given you the references so that you can do further reading like Psycho PG2 official documentation and so on. So be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching.